What's the official name of the project? Styled components. Styled components. Okay. Yeah. I like nail polish components. Better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's we when we chose the logo, we specifically searched for like emoji yeah. that we could like have to communicate everywhere and like have our logo everywhere. Right. And for some reason, that just fit because it's like you know yeah. you're styling things like you know. <laughs> well, you should be painting your nails. So I should. I should actually do that. Yeah, that would be nice. I remember when you first released it and. People were excited about it, but they were also a little bit nervous about it. So what was that all about? So start components came from our needs at Thinkno and just like the general, you know, things that happened in the React community where everybody was building things and everybody had sort of their own ideas on how to style apps. But there was not that one way to do it, right? There were 50 ways to do it. And we try I literally went through and tried every single one. And none of them did everything that I needed it to. And so um, we ended up on this journey of building styled components. And styled components are a bunch of weird ideas that look pretty weird when you see them for the first time. It just sort of feels weird. But then when you try it, like when Glenn showed me the first prototype, um, I, I looked at it and I said, this is a horrible idea. Like, it's just weird. But then I tried it and I was enamored, right? I, I never want to write my styles any other way. That's why I go to conferences and talk about it, because I want everybody else to feel the same way, mm -hmm. right? And Glenn showed me this and I tried it and I was just, I, I can't stop using it, basically. Can you tell us a little bit more about the details of the library? Yeah, so Styled Components is a library for styling React applications. Um, and it has, it puts your styles into JavaScript so that you can use the full power of JavaScript. But contrary to other libraries that do that, it lets you write actual CSS. So you don't write styles as JavaScript objects, for example. You, you, you just write style, CSS how you normally would, which means your designer can come in and also write Styled Components, because it's, it's just CSS. Mm -hmm. and we. It's literally just CSS. So we take that string and inject it into the head. So you can use media queries, pseudo selectors, whatever you want. Everything just works perfectly fine. And then the second weird idea is that we remove the mapping between styles and components. So your, um, if you think about a button component, right? In an application written with normal CSS, you might have a button class name. But that button class name, you'd ever and only use that in the button component and reuse that button component everywhere else, right? But then you have this mapping, but you only ever use the mapping once. So why have a mapping at all? So Style Components completely gets rid of that. And it, you can only style HTML nodes, basically. Um, and that's why it's so, like, it's really unusual. And that's why people sort of look at it and go, hmm, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. But then when, once you try it, it just feels really nice and natural, especially in combination with React. Can you see this concept traveling to other JavaScript communities? I can't say yet which one's, the, which one's going to be the first one. We're exploring Angular and Vue, and we're trying out Ember. Um, so we, we, we're going to see where we, where we get it first. Um, right. But it's definitely the concept. Uh, uh, like we know that the concept works, and we know that it feels really great to work with. So we want to bring it to other JavaScript frameworks as well. How did you get started in React? So I did an internship in London at a company called Anime. And they're like have, you know, they, they just make websites. And I learned HTML, CSS, and jQuery there. And then after two months of my internship, they were like, so. Max, you've got a month of internship left, and we're unsure what we should teach you because you, you know HTML, CSS now, you know jQuery, you can build stuff with it. Um, what do you want to learn? And I said, I have no clue. Right? I, I don't know what I want to learn. And so my boss, James Chambers, went, well, why don't you learn this new cool thing that we've heard about called React? We've been looking at it, we might want to use it in commercial applications, so why don't you build something with it, something tiny, and just see how it feels? And that's how I started learning React, and that's how I got into the whole React thing, which worked out pretty well, to be honest. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to see in the open source community related to your project, like contributions, feedback? The open source community around React is great, but very isolated. Um, I feel like there's little cross-pollination between the different frameworks, so I, I have no idea what, what's happening in the Angular space or in the Ember space or in the Vue space. Or, you know, and I try to follow people on Twitter who are like into Angular or Ember or Vue, but it's still, I, I'm obviously not in those communities. I don't know anybody there. I don't know what's happening. You know? And I feel like it, it would be great if there was a way to keep up with just generally everything that's happening in the JavaScript space. Uh -huh. Did you know there's this thought JavaScript? I know that this, that's why I was saying. <laughs> I think you it's great. Check it out. Yeah, no, no. I honestly think it's great. I love yeah. it. Um, hopefully that, that was really missing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's something where 
you know, we built start components in this React specific, and I was like, well, it would be nice because it feels nice. We should be bringing this to other frameworks as well. But I had no idea if, that, if that's feasible or if that's like because Angular has this shadow DOM thing where you can choose your own shadow DOM, and you know, and Vue has that styling thing. And I'm like, I don't know any of that, right? Yeah. So I, I like have to dig in and think about do I actually want to use this or how, how does it work? You know, it'd be nice to get like a more you know, overview just of what's happening in general. We'll have to see um, if we can get, since Ben, uh, let's just join Google, we'll have to see if we can sort of get your idea and then poke it around on him and then maybe yeah. <laughs> help with the first implementation of it and then you learn come and yeah. see to do it or something. Okay, very cool. Uh, where can we find you on the internet? Um, on Twitter at MXSTBR, which uh -huh. sounds really complicated, but it's just my name without vowels. Yep. So if you remember my name, Max Stoiber, just take out all the vowels and you're going to get my Twitter handle. Oh, I love it. that. Awesome. Well, thank you. No worries. Thanks for having me. Hey there. Are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? Then join this dot instructor Ben Lash to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. Available online and in person, go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today.